Hey everybody, today we are building and testing two lights from a company out of the states by the name of Atrium Lighting. They've been kind enough to send over one of their Vila 240 watt kits and one of their Vila 320 watt kits. Both of these lights are rated to flower a 2x4 space, so I'll be testing them at 8 different heights in my new 2x4 insert that I built for my PPFD measuring machine. Check out the video description for links and timestamps to each section. And if you like what you see in the video, do me a solid and subscribe. So, what are these things made of? Well, the 240 watt kit uses two of their Vila boards in parallel, powered by a Meanwell XLG 240H-A, and the 320 watt kit uses three boards in parallel, and is driven by a Meanwell HLG 320H-54. Each board consists of 272 Samsung LM301B SK bin diodes, and is complemented by 16 Osram 660 nanometer reds, resulting in a color temperature of 3400K. Both lights boast an IP65 rated waterproof design and share the same low profile 10mm heatsink, which I must say is absolutely gorgeous. Sphere testing for the 240 watt kit resulted in a photosynthetic photon flux, or PPF, of 594 micromoles per second, which is essentially a measurement of how much photosynthetically active light the lamp is outputting per second and an efficacy rating of 2.6 micromoles per joule, which is how much photosynthetically active light is produced by the lamp in micromoles per joule of energy. PPF on the 320 watt kit comes in at 890 micromoles per second, with the same efficacy of 2.6 micromoles per joule. Okay, let's build these things. I'm going to start with the little fella. Out of the box, you get an assembled heatsink with the boards attached and wired to a three-way connector on the back. As mentioned, on this smaller kit you get the XLG240 driver, an AC power cable and connector, ratcheting rope hangers, and if you purchase the optional DC extension kit, you'll get a 6 foot length of 2 conductor cable and another connector. This extension kit allows you to run your driver remotely rather than fastening it to the heatsink, which can keep a lot of extra heat out of your grow space, and I'd highly recommend you get it for this 240 watt kit for another reason, and I'll show you why. If you forgo the extension kit, you'll bolt the driver down to the sink like this, which is all fine and dandy. This driver is dimmable, but on these A-type XLGs, the internal potentiometer that you need to get out with the screwdriver to dim the thing is on the bottom of the driver, so it's inaccessible when the thing is fastened down to the heatsink. If you get the extension kit, you can mount the driver in a way that allows you to get at this pot with a screwdriver and dim the light. The tools I'm going to use for this build are a pair of strippers, some flush cutters, which aren't really required but I'll take any excuse I can get to use mine because I love them, a mini screwdriver, and a hex driver. The first thing I did was connect the AC side of the driver. The three AC conductors on the driver are a little bit long from factory, so I'm going to trim mine back to make sure that the waterproof connector clamps on the black jacket and not on the individual colorful wires. The conductors on these meanwhile drivers usually come pre-tinned from factory, so the ends of them will have a little bit of solder on them just to keep them together. And since I've started building lights, I've learned that it's usually better if you're going to be putting these things into a screw terminal like I am here, to chop that little soldered bit off and then just tighten the screw down onto the raw copper. And that's because the soldered ends can cold flow, so if you tighten it down on the soldered bit, the solder can kind of shift and the connection can loosen over time. If you look really closely on these connectors, they actually do have markings for each terminal to identify what it is. So one of them has an L for live or line, one has an N for neutral, and one has a ground symbol. Ultimately, as long as you match your cables up on either side of the connection, you should be good to go. So I'm going to be matching up the driver brown wire with the AC cable black wire, so those are my live wires brown and black, the driver blue wire with the AC cable white wire, that's my neutral, and the driver green and yellow stripe cable with the AC cable green wire. So I'll tighten everything up, give it the old dad slap and say that's not going anywhere, and then make sure I don't have any stray copper hairs anywhere and button the thing up.
Next, I'll terminate the DC side of the driver. I'll do this with the DC extension cable upgrade first, and then I'll show you what it looks like without it after. Again, I'm going to start by trimming back the wires on the extension cable and on the driver DC output cable. The connector Atrium provides with the extension kit is a 3 pin connector just like on the AC side, so I'm just going to pick two of these pins and leave one empty, and I'll just make sure that they match up on the other side. I'm going to wire the red driver positive wire to the white extension wire and the black driver negative wire to the black extension wire. The three-way connector on the light itself is only two pin and not three pin like these ones. The screw terminals are different colors on this one, and the copper terminal is for the positive connection, so I'm going to wire my white conductor to this one, and the silver terminal is for the negative connection, so I'll wire my black extension wire to it. And that's it! Now I can dim with my little mini screwdriver. Something I noticed is that this light really does not like it when the pot is turned all the way up on that driver. And if you go past about 85 or 90% with your screwdriver, it'll shut down until you take that potentiometer back a little bit. So I was still able to get full power from the driver, so the full 240 watts, but I just had to back the pot up a little bit to the point where the light didn't turn off. I've seen this behavior on other XLGs as well. Since it'll be easier for testing for me, and that's what this is really all about, right? I'll show you how to install this driver straight onto the heatsink as well. So there are two little brackets on either side of the sink, which are machined to accommodate a few different drivers, and this one fits nicely. You just thread these four screws into place with the hex bit. Now, instead of hooking up that extension cable, I'm just going to hook up the driver DC wires directly to the three-way connector on the light, and I'm ready to go. Alright, cool. I'll do the big boy now. There really isn't much different on the big kit except the connector on the light is a 4-way connector rather than the 3-way due to the third board. In this kit, you get the HLG 320H54 driver. I got the 54A, which means it has built-in potentiometers for voltage and current. If you get the 54B, that means you can hook up an external potentiometer to it. You also get an AC cable and a connector, you get ratcheting rope hangers just like the other kit, and you can opt for the DC extension kit as well. Assembly with and without the DC extension kit is the exact same as the 240 watt kit. I'll trim my AC wires back, screw them down nice and tight into the 3 pin connector, match them up to the appropriate color on the other side, so brown on the driver to black on the AC cable, blue on the driver to white on the AC cable, and the green and yellow striped wire on the driver to the green wire on the AC cable. If you're not using the extension kit, you just fasten the driver down right onto the heatsink just like the other one, and then connect directly to the four-way connector, which will be the red driver wire to the copper terminal and the black driver wire to the silver terminal. All this thing needs is hangers and it's ready to go. To dim this kit, with this particular design it doesn't really matter whether you use the VO pot which reduces voltage, or the IO pot which reduces current since they both ultimately do the same thing in the end. 
Turning the I.O. pot down directly restricts the current output, while turning the V.O. pot down will sort of indirectly reduce current by causing the boards to draw less at the lower voltage they're given, so you can't really hurt the thing either way. Moving on to some test results now. In terms of temperature and AC draw, after running my PPFD tests, the heatsink on the 320 watt kit measured about 55 degrees Celsius, the driver was 56 degrees, and it was drawing 345 watts from the wall. The 240 watt kit heatsink measured 51 degrees Celsius, the driver was 55 degrees, and the driver was pulling 241 watts from the wall. As I mentioned earlier, I've made some changes to my automated PPFD measuring system. For those of you who haven't seen it yet, this system has an Apogee SQ500 PPFD sensor that rides around on a gantry taking measurements at 3 inch intervals all throughout the space. The measurements are in micromoles per meter squared per second, which gives you an idea of how much photosynthetically active light would be hitting your canopy each second. Since there's quite a performance gap between these two lights, I measured them each in a different range. The 320 watt kit was measured at distances of 30 inches, 28, 26, 24, 22, 20, 18, and 16 inches from the surface of the light to the sensor. The 240 watt kit was measured at 24 inches, 22, 20, 18, 16, 14, 12, and 10 inches from light to sensor. Since I have so much data to present to you, I'm just going to run each slide for 5 seconds each, and feel free to pause as you go through them because they're going to be moving pretty quickly. On each slide I'll have the name of the light at the top, then the hang height below that in grey text, and obviously the results in the big chart. The readings range from 1 inch to 23 inches on the y-axis and 1 inch to 47 inches on the x-axis just because I can get the sensor within about an inch of the walls and I want this data to be conveyed as accurately as possible. You'll see a couple stats on the right. One is for coverage uniformity and one for average PPFD. So coverage uniformity is just a metric that will range from 0 to 1 showing how consistent the lighting is throughout the space. It takes the minimum reading and then divides by the maximum reading. If the score was 1.0, that would mean that the results were the exact same throughout the whole space. Average PPFD is the average for all 153 readings per height in micromoles per meter squared per second. Okay, I'm going to shut up now and let this thing run. Alright, there you have it. So here are my thoughts. These lights both perform really well in a 2x4. I think the optimal hanging height for the 320 watt kit is 24 inches, and for the 240 watt kit I would say 18 inches. These heights provide the best balance of uniformity and output in my opinion. For what it costs to upgrade to the 320 watt kit, I think it's a no brainer. Spend an extra hundred and whatever dollars, and you'll likely find yourself turning your kit down rather than wanting more output. The lights are sleek, they're well built, they use quality parts, and the numbers speak for themselves. Now, the best part of this video. I'm teaming up with Atrium to give these two bad boys from this very video away to two lucky residents of Canada or the United States. I have no conditions or things that you need to do to enter, you don't have to be subbed to my channel in order to qualify or anything, but I will say that I would sure love it if you did so you can help me grow the channel. I've got a pile of stuff that I'm going to be giving away in the coming weeks and subbing to this channel, as well as turning notifications on by clicking the little bell, I can't believe I'm one of those people that say that in the video now, is the best way to make sure that you don't miss the announcements. 
So go down to the video description and follow the link for the giveaway to check out the requirements and the rules for entering. And I'll be announcing the winners of this giveaway on this channel in one week. So stay tuned. Best of luck and thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.